putting ourselves back at top deck cards and games for another week. We had a lot of fun last week playing the Sky Striker deck off the new Forbidden and Limited list, but today is all business, baby. Picking up your favorite deck again is like riding a bike. You'll figure it out in due time. But what about when you have to learn something completely different? So today we're going to be trying a brand new deck. I've had my eye on Marincess for a little bit, and uh, looks like a good contender. I think I'll be able to figure it out. Chat, chat, how's it sound? It should sound good. A shorter one today, uh, rather than typical five rounds, it's gonna be four, because they decided to split, look at that, fumble. They decided to split locals into Edison and Advanced. I can't believe it. It's been in the talks for a minute about having our own Edison locals, but it's finally come to be. Looks like we're splitting Wednesdays, half and half. Kevin, I know this is only a fraction of what I owe you, but I believe you have something I'm looking for today, right? I think you're looking for this June moon, right? I am looking for the June moon. Oh my goodness, bro. Round one was off stream, but it was on the books. A round one opponent, Ant, decided he didn't want to be on stream. He's a little bit rusty with his Gold Pride deck. We'll respect that decision, no problems. I'm up against Gold Pride Punk, which is a deck that I'm very, very familiar with. I know that his end board doesn't end on any disruptions, so I'm gonna let him play. He gets to a juncture that I end up hitting him with a Nibiru, and he has another emergency teleport to keep pushing through. Just a little bit of a setup board. Save the semantics, we ended up cracking it. He couldn't get past it afterwards. Game two, we open up a nutty hand yet again. Valor Nib, that's beaten anything. And I'm feeling especially good when Ant starts his turn by summoning a Baron to Flirt and three summons. Below the threshold of Nibiru, but paired with Effect Valor in my hand, doesn't matter how many summons, that combo is an FTK. At least, you would think so. You would look silly. Because when I hit him with Valor Nib and I think a choke point is combo, he activates Called by the Grave. Unfortunately, that card's at one. Can't really account for that. It is what it is. Game three, I have three little words written. Double goes in match. Unfortunately, Ant could not make any combos under goes in match. Such a shame. What a good Yu-Gi-Oh card. The one thing is, I felt really rusty playing that match though. Picking up a new deck, it's never easy. You're gonna make small little mistakes here and there. There's less players than normal, so there's only four rounds today. So we just gotta end up X1 as per usual. You guys saw how I performed last block. I'm confident we can do that. Let's get into it. Hi Chad, I hope you guys had a good time. I've heard we've had some, some problems. Uh, I'll see if I can fix them or see if we can buy them. We won our first round against um, Gold Pride. What did you want to ask me earlier, by the way? Kevin, yeah. since you've gotten half of your payment so yeah. far, tell the people what you're investing in. Right back into the sword. It's baby. going right back into right the back one, into one piece. piece he, just, he thinks it's way too real. He thinks it's way too real. <laughs> Things are starting to freeze over here at Top Deck Cards and Games. Just finished up round three. Round two, we played against a repeat offender. Kramer's back for more. This time, instead of playing Trick Stars, he stuck with Runix. I have game one that Kramer did not open good. He literally looked at me and said, This is not great. He ended on like Hoogan Pass or something like that with Fountain. It really wasn't that good of a board. I opened it up to be able to beat past it and we go swiftly on to game two. Game two, I ended up making a misplay that I actually wrote down about. Small World is the go-to searcher that I have in my deck. Able to pull out just about anything if you bounce it with a Gamma Seal. I should have really thought that through because I activated the Small World and I ended up getting rid of a Spring Girl in my hand, which is the Marincess like go-to extender. So if he has immediate disruption from my normal summon, probably should have planned for that and maybe kept the Spring Girl in hand to keep going. But going into game three, we ended up cleaning it up. I had full setup, no disruption on Kramer's side there. Not much he could do against the Aqua Argonaut. I believe if we do one more, we still get top eight. That's all we're here for, right? Just some prize. A little bit of content for the vlog. I'm gonna get back in there. See how we do. Yeah. Rolling. Turns out I have no idea what's in these packs. I thought Ray could be in your, but she's not. All right, pack number one. I'm gonna tell by Dan's reaction if we get anything good. Oh my God! What? All right, Dan, don't get too excited. Here we go, ready? Yeah. Ah. Sorry, Chad, I'm back. You okay? Yeah, I actually got to write down my next round here, so. Okay, perfect. Chad, how'd that last game play out? Come on, come on. I got 2-0'd, right? 
Yes. In the end, I don't think it mattered. I don't think I was winning that game. I think um, linking into the three, into the marbled rock, to get the wave live was the best play I could have made. Kevin, come on over here. Everybody's probably wanting to hear from you. Oh, you're playing Go? My man opened, what did he open? Lightning Vortex, Sacred Crane, Metamorphosis. Seems like, seems like Go. That is a distant coder type deck if I've ever seen it too, man. Activate Dimension Fusion. Wow, I'm the better duelist. <laughs> Pretty good ending to the day, actually. We just finished up round four. Again, no five rounds this time around. A little bit smaller of a crowd. We ended up playing against our good friend, Sean. He's piloting a new deck as well. He's piloting Fur Hire Rune. Sean opens up his turn one by draw phase summoning Hugin. You know, play around Jewel and Lockbird. I'm gonna hit it with the Infinite Impermanence once he discards another runic card for cost. Hopefully able to stop him from getting to the fountain. We ended up passing and then we were able to just play on our turn here. I think we had the starter and everything to just get up and go. And then game two, we open up extremely rocky. We're rocking with five hand traps, enough to keep us alive, but not enough to actually make any pushes for game. But with Sean playing runic cards, he can't quite kill us. Puts a couple of extra dudes on the board, but it's nothing too crazy. He didn't see any sprite cards yet. And he passes it back to me with like full go, back row, and then a Donpa. I made a little bit of a misplay because I could have cleared this level two Donpa if I were to reborn and just attacking a Donpa. He's left with no twos and top decking, which is way better than leaving him with a two. I learned that the hard way because he draws into the best card to pick up and that's the sprite blue. Don't, I know, what are you smiling at? You drew like the nut. What did you draw? Oh, why? He ends up special summoning the blue, getting Jet. Jet gets starter, you know, basic sprite stuff. As soon as I can draw a card to just get me going, the game's over. That's exactly what happens, and I am taking it over Sean to up. That is everything I have. We ended up 3-1. That's top eight cut again. Couple more packs in the bank. Let's see if we pull anything good. I'm looking forward to it. Big money, bro. Nine packs today. Up squat, Dan. Altogether, today was a successful day again. Top eight cut. We ended up getting some prizing. Last time we got like 11 packs, almost half a box. We're at sitting at nine. Nine Wild Survivor packs. I am looking for Vanquishing Soul cards. I think those things are pretty cool. Let's see if we get them. Solda. That's a Vanquishing Soul card. Not quite the uh, the CRs I'm looking for. Oh, hey, I need one of these. That's great, <laughs> it's great. Rock of the Vanquisher, man. Link ones, they're never fair. They're never fair. All right, last pack. Anything good? need it good? for content. Anything good. Dan, tell me again. Wait, he gave me a thumbs up, is that good? Couple, what the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you, Dan? <laughs> again, it is what it is. We, uh, we did great again today, though. Uh, piloted a new deck, and I think we're gonna pick up something else going into the next episode. I'll catch you guys then. Fair trade. Yeah. Do you think Big Mom ages like milk? That means I get the Nim Nim channel on that. Sorry. She <laughs> ages too. She That's ages soul like avocados. <laughs> Rapid deterioration. Big Mom ages just like avocado, bro. Goat milk. They look all right. They look okay. You're bugging. All Yu-Gi-Oh cards bro. don't look the same. I, like I don't know where this true. video is going to wind up, like but you cannot look me in the oh. face and tell me that this card does not look good. Or this card. I mean, I can't look you in the face and tell you. You can. You're looking. You just got to go like this. 